So welcome everybody. Today we will be reviewing some of the problems in dimensional analysis. And therefore, since you are preparing for your quiz, it's essential that you pay attention. If you have any questions, ask. The very first, the very first example that I want us to consider is we know for sure that dimensional analysis helps us to determine variables in an equation. Take for example, okay, this thing is acting stubborn, but that's, that's all right. If we have x equal to alpha t plus half beta t squared, this is actually an AP question. You looking at this equation from the onset, you may not recognize the equation, but the question is, what is alpha and beta? What is alpha and beta? In order for you to identify a physical quantity, in order for you to identify a physical quantity, we need to know its units, right? For example, if we have four meters, automatically we will know that this represents what? A length. But if we have four kilometers, automatically we know that this represents what? A mass. The reason we can tell the difference is because of units. Do you understand me? The reason we can tell the difference is because of units. Okay. But for us to determine the appropriate unit for a given physical quantity, we need to know its dimensions. We need to know its dimensions. Why? Because all fundamental physical quantities already have preset dimensions. When I use the word dimensions in this context, remember, I mean um, the physical nature of a given physical quantity. In other words, the generic kind of that particular physical quantity. Now, if human beings were considered to be a physical quantity, it doesn't matter whether you are Asian, Black, Caucasian, or Indian, as long as you are human, you have one dimension. You understand, right? So dimensions represent a generic kind of that given physical quantity. So we are going to start by looking for the dimensions of alpha and what? Better. Good. In order for us to add two or more quantities in science, they must have the same dimensions, right? That is a rule that you must remember at all times. When you add or subtract two terms, listen carefully, this will save your life. For you to add or subtract or equate two things, they must have the same dimensions. If that is true, then the dimensions of x is equal to the dimensions of alpha t, which is equal to the dimensions of what? Beta t squared. I have ignored this half because numbers are dimensionless. I have ignored that half because numbers strictly are dimensionless. Um, so the dimensions of x is L. We now have alpha multiplied by the dimensions of y, t, which means that alpha, the dimensions of alpha, will be equal to L divided by capital T, which is LT minus 1. Who can recognize this? Velocity. That's velocity. So alpha stands for velocity. Yes, please. How did you know that the dimensions of x was L? Like, x is know? distance. Oh, so the variable x always represents In 99% of the cases, it's distance. If it is not otherwise stated, assume it's distance. Okay. I should have stated it, but I didn't because this was an example. In an exam, if I gave you this in a quiz question, I would tell you it's distance. 
and they'll always say that, all right? Now, time, 99.9% of the time always represent, T always represent time, but sometimes it represents something else like distance. But it's always defined. Yes, please? Uh, why did you divide L by T? Oh, no, right, no. Okay, you got it now? Okay, great. Now, let's move on to the next. The dimensions of X will be equal to the dimensions of better and the dimensions of what? T squared. This basically implies that the dimensions of better will be equal to the dimensions of X divided by the dimensions of what? T squared. In other words, the dimensions of better is L divided by T squared, which is equal to LT minus 2. So what is what does better stand for? Acceleration. So you realize that even though we haven't done velocity or acceleration or all that, you are able to do what? Identify given variables in a given equation. You get it, right? You are able to identify a variable in a given equation. Now, another use of dimensional analysis, another use of, yes, please? Good question. Excellent question. Now, remember this. Remember this. I said this before, and I'll keep saying it. And it is the reason why we are doing this topic, and it is the lifeline for this course. You can only add or subtract two terms if they have the same units or if they have the same word dimensions. Therefore, if an equation is given to you, Therefore, if an equation is given to you, any term that is added or subtracted will have the same dimensions. Okay, so if it doesn't have the same dimensions, you can take it apart into separate equations? If it doesn't have the same dimensions, they cannot be added or subtracted or equated together. You cannot say cats, for example, you can only add cats to cats and dogs to dogs. You cannot say a cat is equal to a dog. Do you understand, right? Yeah. So if, 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 if for example, uh, the question gave you this equation, the question gave you this equation, yeah. and you were asked to determine the values of alpha and y, better. You get it, right? So automatically you will assume that for these two things to be added, they must have the same y dimensions. And for this to be equated to this, they must have the same dimensions. Oh, I see. Okay, I see. And that is the this uh, this is embodied in what you call the principle of dimensional analysis, which is we did that in the previous lesson. Remember, always keep this before you. If I'm you, I'll write it in the placard. You you cannot add or you cannot equate two things with unequal dimensions or with unequal units. It's just like in maths, we say that you can only add or subtract like terms. In physics, what really are like terms? Like terms are terms with the same word, dimensions. You understand that, right? Um, now, let's, let's, let's do an, another example. Take, for example, um, if I have, let me say, this is, you probably saw this in chemistry, P plus a over v squared v minus b all of this equal to nrt this is the real gas equation and you probably saw this in chemistry p here stands for pressure and v here stands for volume the most common question that is often asked here in physics is that what are the units of A and the B? What are the units of A and B? Uh, when you look at the equation, it looks complicated. But when you understand that you can only add or subtract two things with the same dimensions, then when you look at it in that perspective, it makes everything easy. If you can only add or subtract two things with the same dimensions, B is subtracted from what? A volume. Therefore, B must represent what? A volume. Do you understand that? 
it makes life simple and it makes analysis of problems in physics simple. This course is a very simple course, but it will be challenging because most students will be unable to deal with algebraic equations. And this is the trick to analyzing equations, summarized in one sentence. You can only add, subtract, or equate two things or two or more things with the same word, dimensions. If you can understand this statement, it will help you a lot. For example, B is, you don't know what B is, but B is subtracted from a volume, therefore B must represent what? A volume. Hence, when you look at this equation, your problem will normally be what is B, your problem will be what is the, what does the, vo what does, what is this volume? And now when you ask the right question, you could get the right answer. You realize that, right? Now, V here stands for the volume of the container, and therefore B here will stand for the volume of that particular word, molecule. Now, again here, this is pressure. Listen up, fellas. This is pressure. A over V square is added onto pressure. Therefore, the dimensions of A over V square must be equal to the dimensions of Y, pressure. Do you see that? In other words, the dimensions of pressure is equal to the dimensions of A divided by the dimensions of Y, V squared. In which case, the dimensions of A is going to be equal to the dimensions of what? Pressure multiplied by the dimensions of what? V squared. Now you can know the dimensions of A and you can determine the units of what? A. Once you know the unit, you can identify the what? physical quantity. You understand that, right? Once you know the quantity, you can identify the physical quantity. Yes, please. So is A dimensions equal to P times V to the minus 2 power? Not to the rest of the power 2. So the dimensions of A, the dimensions of A, therefore will be, what are the dimensions of pressure anyway? Pressure is defined as force over area. We did this in our last class. The dimensions of force is MLT minus 2. The dimensions of area is what? L squared. So this is going to be ML minus 1, T minus 2. Now the dimensions of volume it's just going to be L cube, right? Because volume is length times width times height. Yes, please? Um, when you say like P um, is like F over A and then MLT to the next we, did the, we already did the dimensions of force in our previous so, class. Um, like are we expected to know that if it shows up on a quiz or will it be given? Good question. It will not be given, so you're expected to be able to derive it. If I give you an equation in a quiz, I will give you the formula and what it means that will help you to derive it, all right? Oh. Like if I give you to derive a formula that has acceleration in it, I will give you the definition of acceleration. Because as of now, we haven't formally treated acceleration. But in the course of the semester, when we do all the concepts at the end, you'll say, mm, this is acceleration, this is speed, therefore this is this. You understand, right? But for now, I'm just giving you the toolbox so that when you meet an equation, as we go along in the lecture, you will be able to systematically diagnose that equation. Yes, please. The formula for pressure. Like you won't give us the formula. I will give you the formula for force if pressure involves force. You understand, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Yeah, that's all you need to know. And you need to know the process on how to, on how to do this. <coughs> now, um, this therefore means that the dimensions of little a will be equal to what? ML minus 1, C minus 2, L cube, which is just going to be M, L squared, C minus 2. Hence, the units for A will be m stands for mass so this is kilograms l stands for length so this is meter squared and this is per seconds yes please the 
Oh yeah, thank you please. So this should be squared and therefore this is 6, so this should be what? 5. 5. 5. Please remind me I'll give you one extra point for seeing that, alright? That's, that's really good, good attentiveness. Yes, please. Good question, because as a physicist and a science student, we are dealing with SI units. You understand, right? We are dealing only with SI units. So if something is given to you not in SI units, convert it to what SI units. The last example I will want to do, the last example I want to do before the quiz will be how to use dimensional analysis to derive a formula. Um, I'm actually going to do two examples. One of the things most of you like to do is to swim. When I was a kid, I used to love to swim a lot. Uh, I've been so busy lately that I hardly do that anymore. But when you get into water, you realize that you feel lighter, right? You can carry someone inside of water, but you cannot carry that person outside of water. That tells you that there is a force that pushes somebody upwards when you are in water. We are not going to study that force now, which means that when you are in water, there is pressure compressing on you, as well as what? Pushing up on you. So, we are not even going to do that. That is in another topic which is going to be done, but in physics too. But I'm going to use dimensional analysis to derive the pressure an object experiences in water. Why? Because you can use this to derive anything you want. Yes, please. So you're deriving the buoyancy force? Yeah. So let's say we have, this is an a, 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 a container of fluid. We have an object here of at a certain height or at a certain depth h below water. The density of the water is rho. The weight of this object is mg. We just need to know the parameters. It has mass, therefore it has weight which is acting downwards. So we want to see how the pressure experienced by this guy, we want to develop a model. We want to develop a model that shows how the pressure depends on the density, the acceleration due to gravity, as well as what? The height. So the next logical, yes please, the mass is really not important because how do I know that the pressure that this guy experienced here, it will be the same if you put what, the same mass, you understand right, but it varies with size. Have you ever tried to press down a balloon inside of water? You realize that the bigger the size, the difficult it is, isn't it? But if you put a coin, what happens? It just dips in. So pressure really has to do with what size. Um, and most, so I don't want to put so many factors in here. It's going to lead us to what? Simultaneous equations with three variables, which I'm not sure if you can solve that. Which will be fun. So I want to limit it to three. So we have... Pressure, therefore, will be equal to rho raised to the power x, g raised to the power y, and h raised to the power z. And our task now is to use dimensional analysis to determine the values of x, y, and z. Yes, please? Uh, would, don't you need to put a constant k? Now, true, you have to put a constant k, but it's not important in this case but let's knock in the constant anyway to be consistent but it's really not you will see that very soon 
So the dimensions of pressure, we've calculated that it's ML minus 1, T minus 2. All of this will be equal to the dimensions of density. What are the dimensions of density, please? X. What are the dimensions of G, which is acceleration? And H is just L. This is Z, right? So we, we have ML minus 1, T minus 2. All of this should be equal to MX, L minus 3X, plus Y, plus Z, multiplied by T minus 2Y. I just combine, now let me use a different color. So if, if you look at it carefully, you will realize that a, um, x is equal to 1, negative 2y is equal to negative 2, which means that y is equal to 1. And also, negative 1 is equal to negative 3x plus y plus z, which means that negative 1 is equal to negative 3x plus 2. y is 1. Now, let me erase this. This means that negative 1 is equal to negative. 3 because x is 1 plus 1 plus z. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. If you take the negative 2 to the opposite side, it becomes what? Positive 2. Positive 2 minus 1 is 1. So z is equal to 1. And therefore, our formula boils down to a simple formula P is equal to what? A constant rho GH. This is our formula. Yes, please. P. This is pressure. This is rho, which is density. Mm -hmm. Let's do another. Who here has ridden a, a roller coaster? Okay, great. Let's say we are on a roller coaster. And the roller coaster car is right at the bottom of the roller coaster track. This is the point where you feel a lot of pressure on you. And since you are a physics student, you are curious as to, to calculate the centripetal force that is being that you are feeling. Because when you are actually, this is the part where you have a lot of fun. You know, you are approximately in free fall. You feel that tinkly feeling. And this is the part where you feel the roller coaster car pressing back up on you really hard. Um, so we are interested on that force that you are experiencing towards the center called the centripetal force. You have your mass, you have your what? There's the, the, the track radius is R. So the possible factors are F depends on mass, radius, and your speed. Let me do this. And if that is the case, we would say that F is equal to MX RY 
Vizi. Yes, please. Always. Coincidentally, all the examples I've picked, the constant actually is one. Always. Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. But in, the, in, in if somebody hires you to like, if the Jurassic Park director comes and say, hey, I want to hire you to calculate the speed of a dinosaur of this size. Now, how are you going to do to model? This is actually what happens. You will look at, you ask yourself what factors will affect the speed of a dinosaur size. You understand, right? You put all the factors together and then use dimensional analysis to come up with one of the formula that you can now use to model how fast it can run in a given scenario. And this is actually what happens in real life. Pardon? Um, yes, please. No, it, you could, it doesn't matter, it's multiplication. I just put it that way because it's just by instincts, though. Yeah, I don't have any particular reason. Um, so we have this would mean that the dimensions of F is equal to the dimensions of K. The dimensions of m raised to the power x, the dimensions of r raised to the power y, and the dimensions of v raised to the power z. This will be m lt minus 2. This is going to be m raised to the power x, l raised to the power y, l minus t minus 1, all raised to the power z. So we will have m l t minus 2, all of this equal to m x l y plus z t minus z. So x will be equal to 1. Z will be equal to 2 and uh, Y plus Z will be equal to 1 which means that Y is equal to negative 1, right? As a result, you can clearly see that that F is equal to M V squared divided by R. This is the centripetal force that you will feel. That is the centripetal force that you will feel. Yes, please. Yeah. Z, V is raised to the power 2, right? All right, good question. Look up everybody. She has asked a very intelligent question and I love to answer. <clears throat> this equation, for this equation to be correct, the terms on the right hand side must balance the terms on the left hand side. What do I mean by that? For that to be true, it would mean for the right hand side to be equal to the left hand side it means that the corresponding exponents must be the same the exponent for m here is 1 the exponent for l is 1 the exponent for m here is what x 
Therefore, x must be equal to what? 1 for the right-hand side to be equal to the left-hand side. y plus z must be equal to 1. And the negative z must be equal to negative what? 2. You understand that, right? Because if we substitute those values in here, then the right-hand side will be equal to the left-hand side. Yeah, this is just a basic trick in algebra. Yes, please. Did you say z was 2? Yeah, negative z is equal to negative 2, so z is equal to 2. So then, doesn't that mean the radius is positive? Um, because y would equal no. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Y is negative 1. Any questions? Are you ready for your quiz? Yes, please. How did you go from uh, the line above uh, the red, red line, like the, the state plus the line to... This one? Yeah, derive the equation. This state the same, right? Yeah. Here, L is raised to the power Y. Yeah. Here, L is raised to the power Z. Yeah. When you're multiplying two terms with the same base, what do you do to their powers? Huh? Oh, you add them. You add their powers. Right. That's how I got this. Yes, please. Yeah, yeah, it's, but in this case, the key is one. Yes, please. Rho is density. Yeah. Place no nice. Wait, is this our quiz? Yeah. Pardon? No? Put aside your notebooks, everybody. Take out pieces of paper. It's a simple quiz. One. You you don't need more than one. Listen up, fellas. The question goes as follows. Develop a model. That shows how the period of oscillation of a simple pendulum depends on one mass two length three acceleration due to gravity yes please Not necessarily. Okay. Yes, please. Um, do we have to consider the angle at all, or oh, yeah, we can just angle the velocity? No. Okay. Yes, please. What did you say G was again? Sorry. Acceleration due to gravity. Acceleration. Yes, please. Is period time? Yeah, period is time. You have five minutes. That's part one of the quiz. It's on the slide. Yeah, acceleration due to gravity. Thank you. 
Yeah, bring them here, please. All right, look up, everybody. Look up, everybody. Um, the next part is you're going to accomplish this. You're going to accomplish this with your group members. You will have to show to me that your model worked. You will have to show to me that your model worked. By doing an experiment, you will actually build a simple pendulum. And in this lab, I'm going to show you what to do because this is your first. Subsequently, the coolness of working in groups is you design it, you build it, and you test it. But in this lab, due to time constraint, I will show you what to do. But, and then you do it, and then you verify if your results are correct. Okay? Um, a simple pendulum, the one you have before you, is made up of a, a stand and a, a mass tied to a string. A mass tied to a string. What you need to do is, you will look up measure the length of the pendulum which is the distance from where it is tied to the center of the mass this is l e extend the pendulum a certain angle it should not be large and let it swing and then you will time the time it takes for it to make 20 oscillations okay the reason the reason you will time the time it takes to make 20 oscillations is because you cannot really time the time it makes one oscillation because it's too small and you're human right you will definitely make a mistake right and to do that what is an oscillation if you extend the pendulum bob here an oscillation would be it will swing up there and back that is an oscillation do you get it you would time the time to make 20 and then you would divide that time by what 20 to get your period then the next thing is you will do that for at least for at least seven different lengths And then you get the wire at the time. To minimize random errors, you will do it twice. You will get T1, T2, and then you calculate the average. When you're done, when you're done, please, this is how you're going to analyze due to gravity, which means that the acceleration due to gravity is 4 pi squared divided by the slope. So you will use this to calculate the acceleration due to gravity at Valley Christian High School. So get to work. Um, in front of you, you, you may have a mask or not. If you don't have a mask,